Good afternoon and welcome to Road Gateway Rotary. Jody, would you come and lead us in the pledge, please? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Potter and a Potter with a bite of food. Sorry about that. I just put a bite in my mouth. Follow me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And with an inspiration today is Patty Hansen, who's joining us from Zoom. Let's see if we can okay. hear her. Can you hear me? Perfect. Okay. Uh, after being sick for about a week, I thought this would be appropriate. Time and health are two precious assets that we don't recognize and appreciate until they have been depleted. <laughs> I appreciate them now. <laughs> yes, thank you. All right, looking around the room, it is a full house and a full Zoom screen. That's wonderful. I'm checking to see if I recognize any unfamiliar faces. And then we've got a speaker we'll introduce on Zoom. Let's see here, do we have any guests to introduce? Dan Converse. I'm not Bob Schaller, upper left. Bob Schaller, welcome. That's who we thought was Dan. So we don't have Dan Converse with us, but we have Bob Schaller joining. Welcome, Bob. All right, I don't see any, <laughs> I don't see any other guests or visiting Rotarians. So welcome to everyone. We're gonna jump right into announcements and I've caught Greg with his chewing food too, but I know he's got an announcement about the Super Bowl. And Patty. I didn't bring up my props tonight or today, but um, we are filling up the first board and we've opened up a second board. Um, I sent emails to the folks who have Rotary Direct. You have a free square coming, um, even if you don't buy extra squares. I have that list back there too, which is a typed out list um, under the yellow sign-up sheet. So the way it works is you uh, have $25 donation to the Rotary Foundation, if you're making out a check with a annual fund in the memo, or you can put an IOU in there and then go online and send me a copy of the confirmation email that you get when you make your online uh, contribution, or you can put cash in the envelope. Um, and uh, if you buy four squares, you get 100 extra Paul Harris recognition points, which helps you uh, get closer to a Paul Harris Fellow Award. Uh, at twice the pace. And if you win the Super Bowl pool, you get a Paul Harris Fellow Award. Uh, yay! Yay! <laughs> and uh, just a quick preview about the watch party, which uh, Patty's going to tell you a little bit more about. But I would just want to alert you that we have plenty of door prizes and plenty of little contests. So whoever has the box that has the represents the score after the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter gets a prize. You'll all get um, advertisers. Uh, when you come in the door, and if your advertiser is the first commercial at, uh, in any commercial break, you get a door prize. So we have lots of little ways to do that. So uh, two weeks from Sunday, the 12th, I think game time is four and um, coverage starts at 3.30. So we'll probably open the Grants Pass Museum of Art around three or 3.30. Don't look. Uh, yeah. There we are. Okay, it's really important that we know how many people are gonna be there because Hyla's gonna set up the tables or have someone's, I can't imagine Hyla setting up the tables, but tables will be set up in the chairs and it'd be great if there were more than four people that show up. Uh, alcohol, you can bring beer, wine, whatever it is you want to drink um, and whatever food you want to bring, you can bring enough to share or we can figure out what we wanna do with buying pizzas or whatever. So critically important, let us know how many is gonna be there and as far as the whole prize thing, we've, we're covered with a lot of different prizes. Um, and the whole prize giveaway thing for me is really convoluted. So that's Greg's gig. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, do you want to show up hands? But, but, Who's if, coming? If you're pretty sure you're going to come to the watch party and maybe put up a number of fingers or whatever, if you're going to bring um, family, friends, guests. Okay. okay. Right. Yep. We, I mean, say, I'll send, we'll send out a oh, okay. We'll send out a P-mail so that we can get a response and 
tally them that way. And remember, you don't have to be there the whole time. You don't have to be there to win the Paul Harris Fellow Award, but you do have to be there to win the door prizes. Uh, and you can come, you know, if you if you're uh, typically have a host your own party or go to someone else's party, bring it here. We'll be at the Grants Pass Museum of Art. You can join us for half the game or all the game, whatever you want to do. Questions? Okay. Chiefs and uh, Eagles. Chiefs and Eagles. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, for anybody who may need to know, they are going to be bringing out some more pizza. So if you didn't get enough food and you want more, it's on its way. All right. I think that's it. So I think I'm going to, at this point, ask Tommy to come up and introduce our speaker for the day. Hi there. Today we have uh, Jessica Clark, no, Jennifer Clark, sorry. Anyway, she is going to speak to us about Crossing Bridges, which is about horses that are helping children who've had issues, trauma, all kinds of issues. So, um, you know, our furry friends can be very nice. So Jessica, or Jennifer, I'm <laughs> Thank you. All right, well, thank you guys for having me here today to present and talk about our program. I, I don't think I've spoken to you guys in the past, so I'm excited to be here. Is Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. So at Crossing Bridges, we serve students with a variety of disabilities. These include physical, cognitive, and emotional. Our organization was founded in 2013, and we've grown to serve 100 students each week. We currently have five staff members, 10 horses, and approximately 20 volunteers serving our students. In 2015, we raised funds through private donations and multiple grants to build our enclosed riding arena that you see there. This arena opened up so many doors for our students and it allowed us to provide lessons year round. And it allowed us to give these students and these kids the consistency that they desperately needed in their lives. Since that time, we have done a lot of grant writing and fundraising, and we've been able to build a handicap accessible bathroom for our clients, which also includes a laundry room for washing horse blankets. We also were able to raise funds to fully fence our property with some really nice wood fencing that's a lot safer for our horses and students than our old original fencing was. Um, a dream we've had for a really long time is to build an outdoor trail course at Crossing Bridges. This will allow our students the opportunity to ride outdoors and not just have to be in the indoor arena all the time. We are thankful to have received a $20,000 grant from the Epping Family Foundation of Oregon Community Foundation that will help us get this project started. And we're going to be fundraising throughout 2023 to complete this trail course, hopefully by the end of the year is the goal. So next I'm going to go to the next slide and we're going to talk about, or I am going to talk about uh, the benefits of therapeutic horseback riding using some of our current student success stories. So first is Adrian. Adrian started with us at Crossing Bridges in 2016, and to this day, his lessons are still the highlight of his week. He graduated high school this past year and recently started volunteering when we have our weeks off from lessons. He loves to help out and has the biggest smile when he gets to ride and work with the horses. Adrian is nonverbal and he was born with autism. During his lessons, he is learning communication skills through sign language with his instructor and volunteer. While horses have brought so much joy to Adrian's life, they have also presented a lot of opportunity for him to gain cognitive skills that are helping him in other areas of his life as well. Next one we have is Caden. So Caden started with us at Crossing Bridges in 2019 when he was just four years old. Since that time, the growth we have seen in his life is remarkable. He has a variety of diagnoses, which include apraxia of speech, global apraxia, ADHD, anxiety, and two autoimmune diseases. The combination of all these struggles definitely has caused a lot of frustration for him in communication, which leads to a lot of behavior and anger at times. 
Being with the horses brings out the best in Caden, even on his worst days, and they help him learn to cope with his emotions and behaviors. The horses bring a calmness and a grounded sense to him, and they bring him a lot of joy in his life. His mom shared that being with the horses and staff at Crossing Bridges has changed Caden's life in a very positive way. Next up is Aubrey. So Aubrey started with us just this past summer. Um, she came to us to help her gain confidence and handle the anxiety she was struggling with in her life. Her grandmother called to sign her up for lessons, sharing that she needed a positive outlet while dealing with her mother's drug use throughout most of her life. Aubrey was extremely shy and very depressed in the beginning, but since then she's really, truly opened up through her love of horses. She looks forward to her lesson each week and has gained a lot of confidence in herself and her abilities. Her grandmother recently shared with our staff that her riding lessons are the only thing motivating her to go to school right now. Aubrey is going to start volunteering as well to give her uh, some extra time around the horses each week, which we're very excited about. Next up is Annabelle, Annabelle and Mirabelle. Uh, she, little Annabelle started with us over a year ago when she was four years old. And at that time she was in the beginning stages of being adopted by her grandparents. She was struggling a lot at such a young age with what she had been through and the many changes happening. Her DHS caseworker was extremely supportive and saw what a positive impact the horses were having on her life. Her grandparents give the horses and the experience in our program credit for the changes they saw in her behavior and confidence when her life was in so much turmoil. Next is Zeke. So Zeke has been riding two times a week for the past two years in our program. During that time, his stamina has improved a lot from having to use his core strength and muscles to balance himself on the horse. Zeke is diagnosed with mitochondrial disease, cerebral palsy, epilepsy, and restrictive lung disease. Physically, the horses have helped Zeke in so many ways. Riding gets him out of his wheelchair and the horses help him move and stretch his body. He does a lot of reaching for objects and stretching his arms up high while playing the games, which include dice, rings, ball, and beanbags. Zeke also has a true bond with many of the horses, which you can see here. He will sit and pet them and hang out with them for quite a while. He is almost always in good spirits when he gets to spend time with them, even when he's when he arrives having a hard day. Last student I'm going to talk about is Kendra. So Kendra has been riding for about a year and a half now. Uh, when she started at Crossing Bridges, her grandma shared that she lacked confidence and struggled with communication and daily living skills. Kendra has Fanconi anemia, which mainly affects her bone marrow, but she also has skeletal anomalies, skin pigmentation, and intellectual disabilities. Since starting therapy lessons, Kendra's confidence and independence have skyrocketed and her personality and vocabulary have blossomed. We are working with her on math skills through our dice game and learning to speak in complete sentences with the letter beanbag game. Her grandma shared that this has helped her a lot at school as well. Being with the horses is something Kendra looks forward to all week long. So the next thing I'm gonna talk with you guys about is our horse sponsorship program. So we started, and these are just a little bit of details about it, but we started it in 2016 to help with financial struggles we were having and try to, trying to find ways to help our, our nonprofit run more efficiently. We've had multiple individuals and businesses step up to generously sponsor some of our horses, and it has been a huge help for us financially. Giving our therapy horses the care they need to stay comfortable and do their jobs well can be very expensive. The average monthly cost of caring for one of our therapy horses is four to $500 with the cost increases we have seen in the past year. This expense covers their hay, grain, shoeing, supplements, vet, and body work. We are very grateful to these individuals for seeing what an important role our horses play in these kids' lives. We are always looking to add new horse sponsors to continue giving our horses the care that they need. Our horse sponsors receive recognition on our website and on large sponsorship boards that we have up in the parent seating area of our arena. Next is the student scholarship program. So this program provides financial assistance to low-income families. 
Many of our students would not be able to participate in equine therapy without some form of assistance. And our goal is that no child be turned away due to lack of ability to pay for lessons. We currently have 40 of our students on a full three quarter or half scholarship through Crossing Bridges. If families are in need of a scholarship, then parents fill out a scholarship application, which is reviewed by our executive director. Our scholarship program is funded through grants and private donors in our community. Last year, our student scholarship program was funded through grants from the following foundations. Cheney Family, the Kiwanis Club of Grants Pass, Cow Creek Umpqua Indian Foundation, Richard Reed Foundation, Rose Douglas Foundation, and Arthur Dubbs Foundation. So that sums up all the things I'm talking about. <laughs> um, I was going to show you guys a couple minutes of our video because it it definitely kind of ex explains and shows things better than I can put into words sometimes. I will say though, this video was taken back in 2016. It was when we first opened our indoor arena. We haven't had a nice video done since then, which is something we need to do. It still shows what we do today, but it definitely shows our arena when it was in the very beginning stages. We now have the end enclosed and um, things have changed a little bit, but it still, it still shows our students and our horses. So I think I have it set up where we'll just watch a couple minutes of it. And then I can take questions after that. Sound there is, but it's just music playing. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Playing. <laughs> Where are you located? Um, right off the Merlin exit. We're in between Fleming Middle School and North Valley High School on the same side of the road.
on Monument. I think you're talking about your outdoor trail class. Yeah, trail course, yeah. What is the size of your acreage? So we have about a whole acre on our property that is unused. So we're planning to use that whole acre. So to, obstacle yeah, that? yeah. We're going to put like a bridge and some gates and we'll have the whole thing fully fenced. So we'll be able to take students out there. We're thinking that's going to be a motivator for some kids because that's one question I get asked all the time. Do you guys do trail rides? Like as much as I'd love to say, yes, we do not have accessible trails off our property. So at least that's the next best thing, you know? So, and we're going to leave, so it's pretty wooded. So we're going to take in a lot of those trees out. It's going to be probably close to a $50,000 project by the time it's done. Um, I've got three or four grants we're going to write this year. So hopefully by the end of the year, we can get it completed, but yeah, so they'll be able to play, go through trees and we're going to do the ground so it can be used year round. Yeah. So I'm very excited about it. It's kind of our last big project to do. Oh, yes. Hopefully there's sound now. Jennifer, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> this is Kelly. Hi. Hi. We were supposed to um, meet, but I got this terrible cold, so I couldn't That's do that. And Tommy graciously stepped in, but I wanted everyone to know that your background here, you worked in the multi-handicapped room at Madrona Elementary after graduating from college, which is huge because you've got a heart for this kind of work, but you also have the knowledge to do this kind of work. And there are, so Jennifer, you know how many children there are out there of varying ages that need this kind of help yes. and how horses can be the glue that makes the uh, uh, makes it work for you. Mm -hmm. The kids are drawn to working with horses because they're magic, and it helps you then to be able to address their special needs. Am I right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I got a I got a very good skill set from my time at Madrona that helps me to this day. So that's. Definitely a great job to have. And then to go into this type of work. Um, we did field trips for the kids out at Madrona. We brought them out to our facility back when we had our outdoor arena. And that was kind of what inspired me to start crossing bridges was seeing those connections and just kind of took off from there. So yeah, thank yeah. you. What's the age range We serve students from about three years old to have students in their thirties right now some with down syndrome and cerebral palsy so, yeah from, from the video you're combining horseback riding with learning birds. yes <laughs> so therapeutic horseback riding is very well known throughout the world um well, for horse people, it is <laughs> you know um it's a actually a pretty big thing um but it's nice to build and incorporate, you know, cognitive things like counting and colors and left and right and all these eye, eye hand, dis, you know, discrimination and all that stuff um, with horses because they're so highly motivating for these kids because they're doing it in a fun way. They, they don't even realize they're learning half the time, but they absolutely are. I've had a lot of parents. I mean, I've had students throw a ball for the first time in their life on a horse. I've had students say their name for the first time. Um, Caden actually was that student. Um, so yeah, they're doing it in a fun way, which is awesome. They don't, they don't see it as learning because <laughs> some of those kids are not inspired to learn. Unfortunately, they've had a bad taste put in their mouth. So yes. <laughs> And yet, each student probably only has one horse they make a relationship with. How does that work? And how do they well, and how do they graduate? From so, yes. So, some programs, um, they pair a student up with the same horse every week. We don't do that. In some cases, we do. In some cases, I don't have a choice. I have a specific horse who 
it's only safe for a couple of our students to ride that specific course. But for the most part, we change it up every week. That way they get used to different movements and heights of horses. And uh, I mean, we have like our three ponies who we have weight limits on. So only the smaller kids can ride them. Or we have, you know, any kids that are 200 pounds can only ride our big horse. But there's that in between of probably 80 students that can ride almost all of them. So we change it up for them. And, um, but yeah, we have, we selecting horses is a huge part of my job and finding them because people don't want to give up the good ones. Um, I don't blame them. I won't give up my good horses either, but finding horses that are all the sizes we need, but also the skills, the skill set that the horse has to teach to the, the kids. Cause we have some horses that are just for lead line. And then we have other horses that students ride on their own completely independently. So finding those horses is very difficult, but they're out there somewhere. <laughs> Yes, I should have talked about that. So, good question. Um, so our golf tournament is our main. We've done other small fundraisers, but the past few years, it's been our only fundraiser. We just go big on it. Um, we have our tenth one this summer, actually. So it's at Detra Creek, and we raise most of the money that we use throughout the year at that tournament. So it's a our board of directors helps us a lot with, with it. So, but yeah, it's, so that's our main fundraiser. Good question. <laughs> yeah. How do you incorporate kind of the family into uh, the experience? I, I had a problem Yes. Um, I don't, I don't really know how to answer that. <laughs> um, I are, I mean, we don't, incorporate them a lot. I mean, they watch and I, I have, I do feel that there've been some parents over the years that have learned a lot from seeing the way that we even just putting expectations on these kids. Cause some of the worst, the, one of the worst things you can do with these kids is let them run the show. You know, they want to control everything and the horses are a good motivator for them to have to follow directions. And, um, so I, I wouldn't say we incorporate the parents a lot. Um, I mean, they always, they love watching <laughs> their kids and it's, it gives them a little break, you know? So I tell them when they come, I'm like, just let us take over, you know, you need a break too. So, cause I, I remind myself, I have these kids for one hour a week. They have them 24 seven. So they're a lot, a lot of these kids are. Do you think it's just your passion? Did you grow up around your sister? Yes. Yes, I did grow up around here. Um, I I've lived here my whole life other than I went to Eugene for college for a couple of years. Um, I got my first horse when I turned 10. I grew up showing in the Morgan horse show world. Um, I did the quest North Valley High School equestrian team. And then I got my bachelor's degree in early childhood development. And then, then I worked at Madrona. She had said, I worked there for a few years and learned a lot of skills in working with these type of kids. Um, and then I got my therapeutic uh, horseback riding through PATH. Um, it's professional association of therapeutic horsemanship international. So I just keep that up every year and then crossing bridges is a path center as well. So we're certified through path and then I'm a path instructor. So, yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, yeah. Yes. It completely. Yeah, it completely depends. Um, honestly, I've struggled over the years taking in volunteers that are, you know, ed educational that have that background because they kind of want to take over, <laughs> you know, and it's, that's very hard for the students to trying to listen to multiple people. Um, so we have volunteers that sidewalk with students and they help, they help and support the students, but they just, you know, and that that's me being brutally honest. <laughs> um, but then we have, we have volunteers that come in a lot of horse people come and lead horses. That's a big help for us because some of our students, you know, we can lead the horse and work with the students, but there's some, that it's a three person thing to keep them safe. So yeah, we, we don't use a lot of volunteers, but some, um, and then volunteers help out with cleaning fields and doing other stuff too. So, yeah. Um, I, I don't know because we have a lot of connections already. So my dad's a builder. 
Um, that's probably the only way I've been able to get this far in my career is you built our arena and all of our facilities and everything. Um, I honestly feel like I'd still be fundraising for our arena if he hadn't, you know, helped us out with it. So that's been a huge blessing. We have a great board of directors. Um, I mean, it's just fin continuing to find financial support. We've been very well funded through grants, um, but grants are mainly we can get through for scholars, scholarships for students and um, facility stuff. Operating expenses are a whole nother story. We're trying to find grants that we can get for operating expenses. And that's our biggest need sometimes because we're funded for everything else. So, but how do you function without, <laughs> without those funds, <laughs> having staff that are trained and reliable and keeping the kids safe and, you know, taking care of our horses, you know, most of our horses are old. They need a lot of expensive care. So I would say just more connections through just the community in general, you know, so I'm, we're just always looking for, always looking for, you know, support, but we also have a ton of it. So <laughs> I can't complain. <laughs> we're very, very well supported. So one more, <laughs> one more in the back. <laughs> so Similar stuff. It has been around for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The rogue that's the thing on the rogue river that they do. I've heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the people in charge of it actually their their kids are in our program. So we've sent some of our kids, some of our students for that, which is awesome. They loved it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Kind of wish I could be a student. <laughs> like, how do I get to go on therapeutic rides? All right. Before we get to Sergeant at Arms, I'm going to ask Kirk to come up because we actually have a foundation presentation today. It's always a pleasure to do a foundation presentation, and this time I'd like to have Jim LaFever come up. Been holding on to this for a while since you've been gallivanting all over the <laughs> <laughs> dancing under the ocean and all. Oh, you saw that. <laughs> I saw that, yeah. <laughs> That's quite a deal. <laughs> uh, it's my pleasure uh, to present you with your Paul Harris plus four uh, pin. Uh, it's represented by uh, the Paul Harris uh, pin plus uh, four blue stones, uh, signifying a, a $5,000 donated to the Rotary Foundation. Thank you so much Thank for, you. for your continued support. Yeah. Rotary is a good thing. <laughs> Does wonders in the world. Thank you. Congratulations, Jim. And be sure to stick around because I know Janie will want us to get a photo. Yes. Yes, thank you for that reminder. I had it and I forgot about it. So uh, yeah, congratulations to Kirk who is the District 5110 Foundation Chair now. Annual fund, annual fund chair for the district. Wonderful, thank you. We have a wonderful history in our club of a lot of district leadership. Um, so, you know, just one more thing that makes me proud of this club. Okay, um, Sergeant at Arms, Jolene Lefebvre is coming up today. Oh. Okie dokie. 
And everybody knows it's Groundhog Day. I don't have any groundhog jokes or groundhog stories. It's just not going to happen because no matter what he saw six weeks from today, it's going to be spring. Okay. <clears throat> so, so I have three items on my little list today. And one of those is today is today is today is a day for these three items. It's there's always a national day for something. So this is it. The first one, tater tots. Tater tots were invented by F. Nephi Grieg of Orida in 1953. Can you believe they've been around that long? <clears throat> as, as a way to use excess potato shavings, they came from making frozen French fries. Originally, the, the shavings were sold for livestock feed. The term tater tots is, is a proprietary name owned by Orida. When tater tots were invented, Greg's needed to come up with a name, so they held a contest among employees and friends. Clara Lay Orton, a young housewife, suggested the name tater as a slang for potato and tots to refer to their small size, and of course she won. Now you know about tater tots. Mm -hmm. It's also National Hedgehog Day, if you care to have one of those animals. It's a spiny mammal, and I'm not going to go through where the genus class phylum order family genus species of this. And I still can't believe I could remember that from high school. <laughs> there are 17 species of heads, hedgehogs in five genera found throughout Europe, Asia, and Africa, and they were introduced into New Zealand. There are no hedgehogs native to Australia, no living species native to the Americans. However, the extinct genus Amphichinus was once presented in North America. Then the third thing that it is today is this National Ukulele Day. Does anybody play one? Didn't think so. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly, you play a ukulele? She doesn't hear me. That's okay. Um, Are you talking to me, Kelly? Yeah, you can. No, you... I, oh, I can. No, I can't play it very well at all. As a matter of fact, <laughs> but thanks for asking. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> The ukulele is a member of the lute family and of instruments of Portuguese origin and popularized in Hawaii. It generally employs four nylon strings. The tone and volume of the instrument varies with size construction. Ukuleles commonly come in four sizes, soprano, concert, tenor, and baritone. Now you all know, you've just been educated once again. So let's get on with the um, happy bucks. Does anybody in Zoom land have happy bucks to give? We're gonna go to the Zoomers first because they always get left behind. Any Zoomers in happy land for happy bucks? Nobody, okay. Jim, oh, we do? Oh, okay. I see a hand raised. Uh, it's me, Kelly, and I'm giving 10 happy bucks because you guys have just done a wonderful job. Thank you for coming in and doing Sergeant at Arms when I was supposed to be doing it, and I sound like a frog. And, um, and, and I really enjoyed the Crossing Bridges program given today, and so that's my $10. Okay. Well, Kelly, actually, it's fine <clears throat> to do Sergeant at Arms if you forgot. I signed up and got a bag of chocolate for this. <laughs> okay. Jim. He said, I'll take the mic and. Oh, we got to take the mic to him? Yeah, I'll be the mic, mic runner. No, we'll, she'll run it. I'll run it. I don't know how many of you know what this is, but this is a 16 year chip. And tonight, I've got a 17 year chip for recovery. Are you, Jim? Jim, are you giving happy bucks for that? Yeah. How much? <laughs> Five happy. Okay. Who else? We'll just stay with that table. Okay. I just have a card from um, I've got five happy bucks for Gina Marie for being featured in the King Creek. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
particular one, I knew Shell Price, I'm a new member. And um, a couple of weeks ago, I introduced the Growing Together Center for the zero to five year olds here. Okay, I've got four and a half of us because I'm starting to teach a class for the four and five year olds. Okay, free, everything's free there. And so I have 40 years in the martial arts today. And I developed a program called Samurai Sprouts, <laughs> where they're just having fun and playing games, but learning all their the discipline, how to regulate their energy, um, connect with others respectfully. So um, if you have four or five year olds in your life, I got some flyers. Hey, we can get one for me. And um, yeah, I'm super excited. This is my first time to teach. Since COVID shut, shut uh, down, you know, hands on stuff. So thank you all so much. That name is adorable. <laughs> 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 this is something that makes it <laughs> something that makes it sometimes a ball is difficult. But anyway, um, so you were talking about National Ukulele Day, mm -hmm. and we were sitting there, Patty's phone went off, and the theme, said it was a theme song from the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. <laughs> so if you get a chance, I think it's on YouTube, look up the, um, I think it's the Royal uh, Ukulele Philharmonic Orchestra, <laughs> who does a rendition of the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and it is extraordinary. Okay. <laughs> Five bucks. I saw Doug and Brenda there in Milwaukee for a moment. Uh, we're going to pick up Ellie tonight at the airport. Uh, uh oh, Doug and Brenda, Milwaukee. <laughs> First of all, thank you. I went to see Sadie at the center today. I picked up that flyer for my next door neighbor's four year olds. Thank you very much. But I have five happy books for each trainer. I had a great refresher on Emmanuel Kant last night. And I cannot tell you how thrilled I am to have myself in the class and how excited to be experimenting. Thank you. Okay, I'm giving five happy bucks. Even I just got back from on screen celebrating my 25th wedding anniversary. But one awesome advantage is we go to the first rental when we buy in on screen. Steve tells the guy that it's our Christmas gift. He says, I'm going to upgrade you. So we got a Mustang convertible. <laughs> so a couple old people who kind of you know, <laughs> Um, I'm giving 10 happy bucks because it is my uh, now 10 year old daughter's birthday tomorrow. And we are going to have six uh, 10 year old girls having a soup over my house. So I'm going to have to Okay, I, I do have a five happy bucks uh, because I'm uh, pleased to be the annual fun chair. But it also, y'all have to make me look good. So I, <laughs> every military I every year, I would swap. <laughs> it, yeah, I'll be bugging you for that. Hey, so, uh, but anyway, yeah, it's nice to get back into the uh, foundation committee work again, which I did quite a bit down in my old district. So, anyway, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that looks like it's it for happy bucks. I'll have more next week on the day. Thank you. All right, next week's program, we will be hearing from Colleen Padilla from So Ready. I'm looking forward to that. It's always good to hear an update from them. Um, and the other day that it is today is Optimist Day. And so I have this quote for you. Optimism isn't a belief that things will automatically get better. It's a conviction that we can make things better. And that was from Melinda Gates. All right. Thank you so much. And we will see you all next week.